for what God continues to do in all of our lives. How have you been dealing with the heat? It's very hot. Elder Jackie, you know, you're so wonderful. You don't have to move to that seat. Just on Bible study nights, if you want to sit in the seat that you love, you can make it happen. It's absolutely okay. It's good to see Marshall. Like, even, even Marshall's back there. Marshall got his seat. He's all, you know, it's, it's, it's. And then Nathan, Nathan, I, I don't know why he over there. I, I just don't understand it. I mean, I just need folks in this space right here. Help me out a little bit, folks. Come on, man, you know. It's all good. It's all good. No, I, I just wanted to just take a few minutes and just talk to you guys um, just about what God is doing, all right? We don't need a whole lot of music. We got some, some later on that's going to sing for us. For those of you who are watching us online, uh, just bear with me for a couple of minutes. But I, I, I want all of us to pay attention to um, what is happening in the earth right now, okay? Uh, there is an assault on the body of believers in such a way it's trying to smother the voice of the believers in the earth. The question that I have for all of us this morning as we come together on Ignite Sunday is, <laughs> has our voice already been silenced because we're not putting our testimonies on blast? We're not really taking time to share the gospel. We're more concerned about our individual brands. Have we forgotten what God has done for us? Well, we're not even showing up. Uh, places, I can just say here, uh, this is the thing that I've learned. I love the growth that's taking place here at BGI. We added two people to the ministry yesterday. Two people joined during Saturday service. Wonderful, wonderful thing. I don't get caught up in uh, who God adds to the local church, I'm more concerned about who God adds to the kingdom's church, the, the body of Christ. But it's always refreshing when you have people who, once they've committed and given their lives to Christ and have been um, grafted in, that they want to use this ministry as their covering. It's always good because we've gone for months with the pandemic and so forth, and just kept pressing forward to the mark of the higher calling. Uh, so I, I, I wonder uh, for what we're seeing, because our actions do reflect what's a priority to us, are we really being intentional about spreading the gospel? I really believe what I'm seeing is once there was an impression that things were getting back to okay, many folks started going back to their old ways. When God does something in the earth, whatever it is, there is a shift to something greater, a shift to newness. It's unfamiliar, it's uncomfortable. Many people don't like to leave their familiar and go into their uncomfortable, their unfamiliar. But our prayers really are asking God to take us to better. When he begins to try to honor our prayers to take us to better and higher, we really don't wanna go there because it's unfamiliar to us. It's uncomfortable. We are not familiar with this journey we're comfortable right where we are, but at the same time, we're asking God for more. Many people try to go back to the familiar. God says, I'm done with the familiar. I did that. That was important, but now I'm taking you to something better. And I believe that for the church, judgment comes to the church first in so many different ways. We said that before. You can look in the, in the text. And before anything is done to the world, it's done to the church first. God is shaking us. He's saying, look, I want to take you to what is unfamiliar, but it will be better for you. You keep trying to go back to what is familiar because that was comfortable to you. And so today, I just want you to reflect on your life. 
Are you being pulled to what was familiar or are you moving into something that is unfamiliar, uncomfortable, but all you see is blessings and growth? Uncomfortable is where you grow the most. Uncomfortable is where you grow the most. Yes, uncomfortable is where you grow the most. So this morning as I talk to you and talk to those of you who are online, you have to have a relationship with the Savior. I'm not going to sugarcoat this thing for us. What is a relationship? You heard the word. Hearing the word it does not give you a relationship. Hearing the word does not give you a relationship. Hearing the word points you to the Savior. Doing the word. Now you're in relationship. The word says, let's be hearers and doers of the word. When you are a doer, you are building a relationship with the Savior. If you are not doing what the word says, sadly, you are not in relationship with the Savior. I, I, I just, I wanted to start it out. It's a somber because the Lord put this on my heart. I didn't want any underlayer, underlaying music. I wanted you to hear me clearly, folks. I, it's so important for the church, okay? I'm going to repeat this again. If you are not doing the word, you are not in relationship with the Savior. God is love. He's love. He wants all to get in. <laughs> and you can't work yourself to get in. You got to believe what the Savior did. But there is a requirement for us to put those things into practice. And what we are seeing with the church, the body of believers, our choices, what we choose to do is truly on front street. We can make all of the excuses about why we're not doing something. And then we say, I got a relationship with him. I don't need this or I need that. Let me tell you something. When you have a relationship with the Savior, <laughs> to stir you up, it, it, it literally, and all I'm going to say to you as we get ready to start today's worship, examine yourself, make sure that you're not only a hearer of the word, but you're a doer because it's in the doing that will keep you stable during unstable times. It's in the doing of the word that will allow you to soar above everything you see in the earth. Amen? Amen. Second thing, you see a lot of stuff about COVID and the Delta variant, okay? BGI never closes doors. I hope you know that. We emphasize personal responsibility and safety. We will never close our doors. I don't care what the government says we should do, but I want to emphasize to you the importance of safety and personal responsibility. So if you're inside this house, you see what the sign says when you come in. There is a requirement here. I need you to do that and honor that. When you're up here speaking, of course, you can't do it because it's hard. Safety, personal responsibility. What does that look like? Inside the walls of BGI? Put it on. If you don't have one, you can go to the front. Safety, personal responsibility. Second thing, for those of you who um, are confused about all the mixed messages you're you're seeing, it's intentional. You know that, right? It's intentional. But here's what I want you to do. How you manage your health. Manage the situation the same way you manage your health. Talk to your doctor. You go to your, go to your doctor for everything else. Talk to your doctor who is the trusted healthcare provider and then make a decision praying and fasting, okay? Do not listen to people, listen to God, 
go to your healthcare provider, get the information from, and then through prayer and fasting, God will allow you to make a decision about your own health, personal responsibility, safety, okay? That's all I'm gonna say this morning, but it's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Can I get you up on your feet this morning? Can you, you don't need any music. Can I, can I just get y'all to clap for God this morning? Clap for God this morning because let me tell you something. God is doing something. He is, he is bringing new people into the body of believers. We baptized folks last week, yesterday on Sabbath, Saturday. We, we uh, had two folks who joined the ministry here at BGI. And listen, there is something happening. There's something happening and I want you to be a part of it. So show up, show out and expect God to do something for you. So as we get ready to go into worship, I want you to affix yourselves to the screen, your eyes to the screen, as we get ready to begin with a video and then you're gonna hear from Lady Rhonda and then we're gonna go into the word and we're gonna have you out here before it gets too hot, amen? Amen, Khalil and the Media Center, go ahead and hit that magic button, amen.
continues to do in our lives let's let's just come to the altar let's come to the altar uh, and and just give him everything we say we give ourselves away and how many of you have authentically uh giving yourselves to him we started out this morning about talking about the importance of um uh, being in relationship and so when you're in relationship you're talking to him you're now doing what he says. He says, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So talk to him. He wants to hear from you. So as we're at the altar, I just want you to take time to talk to him. Then I'll come back and make sure that we close it out in prayer. Amen. This is your time. For those of you online, this is your time. This is your time. Talk to him right now. This is that personal time.
today we thank you for just being God, Yahweh. We sing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All glory and honor belongs to you. Lord, we come to you with humble hearts and we pray for our nation. We pray for the house of God, the, the children of God. Lord, I, I lift up those who have reached out to us and asked for prayer. prayer. Brother Corey Crawford indicated he lost a close friend this morning. Lord, we ask that you lift that family up. You know the name. You know what needs to happen. Lord, we pray for one of our online viewers from Indianapolis, Sister Priska Mango. She lost one of her cousins in Zimbabwe. And so, Lord, praying for that family this morning. Lord, we just ask right now that you just heal their hearts, Lord. Their hearts are broken. Lord, we, we, we pray for others who are struggling during this time, those who uh, don't know which direction to go, Lord, that you will meet them where they are and you will help them to understand that you have never left them or forsaken them. Lord, we pray for the people who are before the altar right now, each one who have already talked to you and we're just kind of just reiterating, Lord, that, that we ask that you hear their prayers. You said in the word that our prayers are like incense, that sweet smell that makes it to you, Lord. So we know, Lord, that you are moving on our behalf right now. For those online, there's someone right now who is struggling with one, whether or not they want to continue to live. I'm speaking to you right now. God says he's with you right now. Do not attempt to take your life. He says that you have more to live for right now. You have more to live for. And so right now I'm casting out that demon of depression, that demon of anxiety, that demon that has left a mark of hopelessness in that soul. Right now in the name of Jesus, I'm declaring victory in your life that no weapons formed against you may prosper. It may seem daunting and dark, but God says you keep moving forward towards him and that darkness will flee. Heavenly Father, I'm praying for folks' health this morning. Lord, I'm praying for their wisdom. This is the year of wisdom at BGI. So right now, Lord, I ask that you impart into each person wisdom about how to deal with the things they're dealing with individually. Heavenly Father, I pray for the children. BGI has children. I pray that you will infuse into the parents the importance of bringing their children to understand the power of collective worship, the power of corporate worship, the power of not forsaking the assembly of believers, Lord, and that they will not allow what the world is trying to tell them about what's going on in the world to be an excuse not to do what you say. Lord, this morning I pray that the believer, the believer who has struggled will begin to put into practice what your word says, Lord, and we will stop making excuses, Lord. I pray that you will give each person the revelation that they have fallen out of relationship with you. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you will just give them time and, and your patience, Lord, that they will reach for you. This morning I ask, Lord, that you speak to me and through me as a word which goes forth will penetrate the hearts of those who've come to receive, that uh, they will receive the word and they will do the word and they will share the word. In your holy name, Jesus, Yeshua, I love you, we love you, we lift you up. All praises, all glory, all honor belong to you, amen. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on this morning. Um, and it's good to just be able to come together with other believers and fellowship and be able to really um, encourage one another. You all look good this morning. I know it's been pretty hot out there. It's, it was hot yesterday, and it felt like when I walked outside, I, I would melt. I had to get back inside 113 heat index, got up to about 99 degrees, and my poor little plants out in my garden. They just look so sad. Give me water. Give me water. I'm like, I don't know if I want to come out there. You guys on your own today. But that's how it is. It's, it's really hot and there's so many things happening. Um, extremes. 
Everywhere you look, there's extremes. So you know, I didn't do what we normally do, so I'm gonna ask you to stand again. Because we gotta do it, we gotta set the tone. Raise your Bibles. You know how we do it. This word is Jesus. This word, I believe it, I receive it in his holy names. You all may be seated. Holy name. There is only one name, Yahweh. We love you so much. But yeah, there's so much going on. And sometimes you ask yourself, man, when is all of this going to stop? When, when I'm seeing uh, extreme conditions. I'm seeing people do crazy things. I'm seeing things I've never seen before. And God says, listen, you've never seen it before, but there's nothing new under the sun that's uncommon to man. Uh, he says that it's, it's being heightened to get your attention. Get your attention. It's the relationship with the Savior that keeps you stable in unstable times. The Word tells us to be a hearer and doer, as we learned this morning. Be a hearer and doer, because in the doing, you will be able to overcome everything that is trying to be thrown at you. You won't be confused about what you, you hear people talking about. There's so many outlets for you to get information, and unfortunately, you guys are tuned into all of them. And you don't, know, you don't know which way to go. You're listening to your friends. You're listening to Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. you got all these sources of information, but you're not really plugged in like you should be to the right source, the Savior, the Word. Uh, we're not being judgmental. Somebody's saying, don't judge me. Don't judge me. You don't know my relationship with the Savior. How dare you tell me about my relationship? No, but your response lets me know in that moment you have been offended because the truth has cut you like a knife. Brothers and sisters, we got to get to relationship. What we don't want to do is end up like Israel did back in the day. So today, the subject of the message is given over to what you love given over to what you love. Brothers and sisters, as I go through my text this morning um, and I look at Facebook, I'm scrolling through right now and I'm seeing people who I know who are doing things today. They're out and about. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> but they're forsaken the assembly of believers. Scrolling through my timeline, not my timeline, but the news feed. And I'm like, man, I won't call their name, but I hadn't seen them in a minute, but they say we cover them. Hmm. And then when you ask them, I just don't know about COVID. That's the excuse. That's the cover. Your choice is really your priority. I'm going through the news feed and wow, this person who says that they're in relationship with the Lord is being really vulgar online. And I can hear them saying, don't judge me, don't judge me. You don't know my relationship with the Lord. As I continue to scroll down, I'm like, wow. It's the relationship, brothers and sisters, that's going to keep you. Nothing else will keep you. It's the relationship that will allow you to understand what is truth, what is truth when all kinds of information trying to bombard your mind. It's the relationship with the Savior that will keep you rooted and grounded when the winds of life become so hard you will still stand, and it's the relationship with the word that will allow you to be consistent and committed to doing what he says. Now, we're not all perfect. We, we, we make mistakes. But do we choose to make them? You know, that's a cover, too, at times. And this is not going to be one of those friendly, feel-good sermons today. But it's one of those sermons that we have to be awakened. God wants to awaken the body of believers to the truth. So I want you to turn with me to Lamentations. 
the book of Lamentations. It's a song, Lamentations 1, verses 1 through 9. I'm going to be reading from the NIV version, and I want to set this up for you because uh, relationship with the Savior is the glue that keeps things together. Whenever there's a broken something in your house, first thing you want to do, if it's a chair, you're going to go get some super glue. You're going to try to do some things to put it back together because we know the glue is the thing that binds it together. But when you see things falling apart, everybody else is trying to figure out how to put it back together again without the glue of Jesus. So when you look in the book of Lamentations, it's a, it's, it's a collection of songs. And, and, you know, no one really knows the author of it, but it's, it's pretty much credited to the prophet Jeremiah. And if you know anything about Israel, Israel is it's, it's, um, like most of us humans. Over time, if you read in the book of Chronicles, 1 Chronicles and 2 Chronicles, and 1 Kings and 2 Kings, uh, you will find that every king who had the responsibility of ruling over God's people made God angrier. Every king, every king. And when it finally got to Ahab, he made God more angry than any of the kings before. Have you ever, ever been around somebody? You've had some folks that got on your nerves and made you upset, but there's this one person who just, ooh, just did it to you. Ahab was one of them. Ahab was one of them. And what he did, and what you uh, will go into the text later on to find out is Ahab, who had responsibility of keeping uh, God's children on the right path, allowed other things to come in, other doctrines, other religions, all this other stuff. His wife, Jezebel, she was a worshiper of, of Baal and allowed that to come in to the point that they, were, they killed all of the prophets of God. God was angry. So when you go through the text, you, you begin to see, even as you go back over the history, that even though God wanted a relationship with Israel, at some point the children rebelled. They didn't want what God had. They wanted what they wanted. And at some point and many times, God got fed up and gave them over to someone else. In the book of Lamentations, you're going to find at this point Babylon had taken over, had, had taken over Israel. Uh, and the good days of prosperity, the good days of good eating, where you didn't have to work so hard. You still had to work, but God blessed it because he was your protector. He's your covering. But when you rebel against his word, those things dry up. And so there's a few people now who, who are witnessing and observing, man, this was a cool place at one point. Boy, we had it good. We had opportunities. Doors were opening. We had all this stuff. And now it's a desolate place. The author writes, how deserted lies the city. Once so full of people, how like a widow is she who once was great among the nations? She who was queen among the provinces has now become a slave. Bitterly she weeps at night, tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, there is no one to comfort her. Using her as a metaphor, metaphor, it could be you and me or somebody else who's fallen away, who's gotten outside of the protection of God. So that could be you at this moment. All her friends have betrayed her. They have become her enemies. After affliction and harsh labor, Judah has gone into exile. She dwells among the nations. She finds no resting place. All who pursue her have overtaken her in the midst of her distress. Brothers and sisters, there's something going on. How could it be that a once prosperous, thriving society, nation that's supposed to be the children of God, find themselves in a situation where all of this is happening? It has happened. And those who are writing the book of Lamentation, these are songs that this is what's coming out of them because they're grieved by what they see. How could this be? God has given them over to what they loved. 
and it wasn't him. Brothers and sisters, we got to make sure we're, we're not in that position. And it goes on to say, the roads to Zion mourn, for no one comes to her appointed festivals. Oh, it was a happening place at one point, but now it's dead. There's nothing going on. All her gateways are, are desolate. Her priests groan. Her young women grieve, and she is bitter in bitter anguish. Her foes have become her masters. Her enemies are at ease. The Lord has brought her grief because of her many sins. Her children have gone into exile, captive before the foe. All the splendor has departed from daughter Zion. Her, her princes are like deer that find no pasture. In weakness, they have fled before the pursuer. In the days of affliction and wandering, Jerusalem remembers all the treasures that were hers in days old. It's all past now, brothers and sisters. It's gone. When her people fell into enemy hands, there was no one to help her. Her enemies looked at her and laughed at her destruction. Jerusalem has sinned greatly and so has become unclean. All who honored her despise her, for they have all seen her naked. She's been exposed. She, she, she herself groans and turns away. Her filthiness clung to her skirts. She, she did not consider her future. Her fall was astounding. There was none to comfort her. Look, Lord, on my affliction, for the enemy has triumphed. Given over to what you love. What do you love more than you love God? God is such a God of love. He's so good that he'll give you over to what you love, even if that means you not being a part of him. Brothers and sisters, in the text, the author is lamenting about what, what they're seeing. Prosperity, now desolate. Festivals which really were the life of the city. Feast of the unleavened bread and all of this other stuff not happening anymore. The enemies are at ease. In other words, when, when they were walking with God, the enemies were fearful. Now they're at ease because you're walking with them. They're laughing at you because they see that you really didn't believe what you preached. And they're laughing at you now, and, and you don't know which way to go. You're wandering. Uh, you, 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 even your enemies won't help you. You become like your enemies, and they won't even help you. That's what the author is lamenting in this chapter. What it looks like when God has taken his hands off of you. You don't want to be in that place, brothers and sisters. That's why it's important for each one of us to evaluate our relationship with the Savior. You know, it's one thing to be a hearer of the word. I heard it. Yeah, I heard it. Boy, preacher preached good today. Boy, he shouted at the end. But when you leave out, you can't do it because you don't remember it because it just felt good. That's why the word says for us to be hearers and doers, doers, doers. If we keep on doing, the love of God continues to protect us. It corrects us. The love of God will long suffer because we have to grow. He is patient and kind. As Peter said in 2 Peter 3, 9, it is the will of the Father that all repent and come unto salvation. The Father is slow. He's patient. He wants us to grow. As long as we seek him first in our choices, then all things will be added unto us. What are we doing today? What are you doing? Why are you forsaking 
coming together with other believers. And I'm not just talking about BGI. I'm talking about those of you who might be members of other local ministries. Why is it that you found yourself comfortable in front of your computer? But in Hebrews 10, 25, uh, it tells us that there's something special about the body of believers coming together. There's a special anointing when we come together that fills us up. But it says in the word, not but, but and, it says in the word, don't forsake it. But we listen to everybody else and we don't listen to what the word says. But last week and yesterday and the day before, you didn't forsake and go into Walmart. You didn't forsake and go into Kroger. You didn't forsake and going out to the mall, to the different stores. You didn't forsake and going out to El Agave or Longhorn or Texas Roadhouse. You didn't forsake and going to that family gathering. You didn't forsake and bring people over to your house and hang out in the backyard. You did not forsake in that. So why are you forsaking the assembly of believers? See, the author in the text shows us uh, in this song, because you know, whenever you have something so gut-wrenching, uh, some of the best songs come from a place of brokenness. <laughs> have you ever been in a situation where you were crushed? <laughs> and all you could do is cry out, but the crying out was like song. I mean, you, you were deep. Oh my goodness, the thrill is gone. <laughs> I, I believe B.B. King wrote that song when, when, uh, when he was crushed. The drill is gone, and now it's a hit, right? You, you write things, and, and profound things come from a place of crushing. It, it takes the crushing of the grapes to get fine wine. So in Lamentations, this is a song, and you're seeing, that, and, and let's just get into the eyes of the person who's looking around and remembering what it looked like when, when they were in relationship with the Father. And now, when they are no longer in relationship with the Father, what it looks like. Suffering. Suffering. See, brothers and sisters, Many of you have tried to go back to the old normal when you thought everything was going to be okay. But those of you who shifted to what God wants for your life, which made you uncomfortable, but it grew you, you're okay. Those of you who are going back to what was familiar to you, you're going to be crushed. Those of you who are moving with God into the unfamiliar as Abraham did, you will be blessed. Those of you who are going back to what was familiar will be crushed, but you still can be blessed when you realize the crushing was to get you away from what you thought was good, move you to something better. Brothers and sisters, you got to do something different. Your choices have to be different. For the nation of Israel at this moment, they chose not to follow the ways of God. And God loved them so much that he gave them over to what he loved, what they loved. Even if that means being apart from him. Where are you today in your relationship? You know, we could stay in Lamentations. Because the author is lamenting about what, what, what is being seen. But we can go into the New Testament and we can look in the, and what Paul is telling us in Romans 1, verses 20 through 22. Go with me there. Romans 1, verse 20 through 22. Because as I've told you, brothers and sisters, at the very beginning, we see that uh, there are things that seem to be extreme that we've never seen before. But God tells us in this word that there is nothing that's uncommon to God and uncommon to man. It's been before, but it's more intense. The more intense it is, it's that God is getting our attention. So the apostle Paul, who understands what it is for his attention to be gotten by God, <laughs> uh, he, he writes here, uh, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities his internal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. He's letting us know you have no excuse. 
You know there's something greater that's created what you see, but you choose not to worship him. So he's, he's, he's dealing with the church at Rome, but I want to fast forward to right now because these words still resonate in this moment. You see God all around you, but you choose something else. You haven't made God your priority, although you want the blessings of God, you don't want to give him your full love. He says, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. The further you be in relationship with the world, the darker your mind will become. It's called a fog. The world wants you to fall into that fog. The world that has rejected who the Savior is, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, his Hebrew name, Jesus Christ. Those who've rejected that name, those who say, you can be what you want to be, even if it means rejecting what God says is right and wrong. You can be that. What we will find ourselves in at some point is what is written in Lamentations 1 as the author is looking at the individual and seeing desolation. When God removes his hands from us, it's not pretty. It's hard. The ways of a transgressor are hard. But he says, my yoke is easy. It's light. But the ways of a transgressor, a transgressor is a person who's heard the word but chosen to do something else that's opposite of the word but still think they have God's love. You do have God's love. He loves you so much that he'll give you over to what you love, even if it's something that rejects him. Well, I didn't make that up. Turn with me to Romans 1, verse 28. Go down to verse 28. Paul says, furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God. This is about the relationship. See, you hear the word. Y'all go with me here. You hear it. You don't retain it. Because you can't do what you have not retained. That's why you got a bunch of people who go to church services. (laughs) But they haven't retained the knowledge. It's not important to them. It was important for them to be seen showing up. It was important for them to feel good in the moment. But they didn't retain the wisdom that God poured out through the preacher. Word of God says, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can a preacher preach unless he or she has been sent? So you, you heard it, but you didn't retain the knowledge. If you didn't retain the knowledge, you can't do it. That's why you've got so many folks who are so big on being scholars of the word, but they have no revelation. They can't, the revelation comes from when you do it. It comes from when you do it. Uh, you can study the text all day long, but if you retain, if you're not retaining it and doing it, you, you get no revelation. You're, you only have your logic. And that's what's happening today, brothers and sisters. You have been listening to people who have been scholars but have not been doing it. And you thought they had something more because of what, the, what you thought was more. And you were confused when you had so-called people prophesying about certain things, worldly things. It didn't line up with the word. It didn't even, I don't understand it, but you, 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 you know. God should have opened your eyes to what is true, him. But it goes on to say that when they didn't Retain the knowledge of God. So God gave them over. Uh-oh, he, he, he gave them over. I thought God is love. I thought, he, I thought we can all do what we want to do because we are who we are. And that we get God. Something's wrong here. This, this can't be written that way because everything I've heard, uh, God is a God of love. I can continue to pursue fornication, shacking up with somebody. I can, I can uh, be an adulterer. 
I can uh, be a whoremonger. I can be a gossip, a liar. I can be a homosexual. I can be all these things. I can, I can sleep with whoever, even though I may be married. I can do all this stuff, and God loves me. He, he loves me. I'll get to heaven. That's the message that's, that many people have received because what it gives them is a green light to do what they want to do. But they don't read the text here that says, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. How do I reconcile that God is love and he's patient with me? to this particular passage in Romans 128, where it says that he gives me over to a depraved or a reprobate mind. In other words, he removes himself from me. He was the guardrail that kept me from hurting myself by going over the ledge. But now there's no guardrail and he's just letting us go over the cliff. How do I reconcile the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, the God of Israel, my God, Yahweh, who I've been told is love. Well, let me fall over the cliff. God doesn't want you to fall over the cliff. You choose the cliff. See, God doesn't throw nobody into hell. He doesn't do it. Because that would counter what his word says. That it is his will that all repent and come unto salvation. So God doesn't throw anybody into hell. And for those preachers who tell you he throws you into hell, tell them to go sit down. You choose hell. And then he loves you so much he'll give you over to what you choose. He didn't throw you there, you chose it. So when we go into Lamentations and we read chapter 1, at this moment, Israel is literally dealing with all kind of hell. Hell on earth. Hell on earth. Anguishing, desolate, not thriving, no opportunities to, to be better because you chose worse. See, when you choose God, he elevates you. When you choose something else, it destroys you. And you will be the only one who doesn't recognize that what was once better for you, you have gone to worse, but you've chosen the things that pulled you into that place. God says, don't even play with him. When you recognize you stumble, this is how much he loves you. There's a place to come back to being in a relationship with him. But you got to give up the things that cause you to stumble. In other words, you must choose to be with him and let go of the things that you once chose that caused your destruction. Brothers and sisters, aren't you glad this morning that you have chosen the Savior? He, he, he loves us so much that he is patient, but we have to be consistent and committed to following his word. The word is our guide. His commands, the law, is the foundation. We can't work ourselves to righteousness. We get righteousness through our faith in Jesus Christ. He who believes in what he did, he died on the cross for our sins. He, he was raised from the dead three days later with all power, and now he sits at the right hand of the Father. Him, her, you, you believe you got something, and he will grow you. So now what we do is the word becomes the foundation by which we live. We will not reject the knowledge of God. We will retain the knowledge of God so that it is his wisdom, his Holy Spirit that guides us in unstable times. We are able to make wise decisions. This is the year of wisdom at BGI. And so, brothers and sisters, the wisdom that God pours into you to deal with the things you each are dealing with will allow you to become a victor because we are already working from victory because victory has been won in Christ Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, 
This is for you, the believer. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. God says in his word that his son has come to give you life and that you might have it more abundantly. So when it seems things are hopeless all around you, that is not your reality. You are in the world, but you're not of the world. You're of the kingdom of heaven, and he is giving you what you need to navigate what you see. That's what happens when we're in relationship. I choose to trust God. I walk by faith, not by sight. And don't be looking to everybody else around you. Should I go this way? You know something? It's so funny that when we go to the book of Facebook in chapter 1, verse 3, you guys instantly believe the book of Facebook. It's, it's so interesting. Uh, the book of Facebook and all the songs, you, uh, the book of Instagram, you, you believe that stuff. You move on it. Well, it said it in Facebook. It said it on Instagram. <laughs> And you guys have some mad faith. Some of you have some mad faith. Y'all have faith. I, I'm telling you, God has dealt each person a measure of faith. Because I see y'all putting y'all faith in basketball teams and football teams. Oh, they're going to win it. I just believe it. And you sit in front of the TV. You even spend all your money to go to a game. I'm going to digress for just a second. We're going to get out of here, right? So, so let me tell you a story. One of the blessings that Rhonda and I have been able to experience over the years as being a part of um, NBA All-Star Weekend when I used to work the public relations for the NBA Wives Association called Behind the Bench. You can Google them. Uh, and what's really interesting is when we would go to All-Star Weekends many, many times, different places, Los Angeles, Denver, Atlanta, uh, Philadelphia, wherever it was, Houston, in the early 2000s, we went and I had access to a lot of stuff because the wives had this huge fundraising event and I was responsible for the public relations and the media that wanted to come. I think one year we were at the Beverly Hills Hotel and they were honoring Janet Jackson after she had the wardrobe malfunction. So there was media all over the country that was there and we had to deal with that. But here's what I, what I learned, right? <laughs> all of the events that we went to that, you know, all of the A celebrities were at, and, you know, let's keep in mind, they were blessed to meet me, not the other way around. They didn't know it, but they were blessed for me to be in their presence. That's how you have to think. <laughs> you got to value who God has made you, all right? But I'm in these situations, right, and I'm seeing this stuff, and I'm getting into this stuff for free. <laughs> Access. And then I notice the people who really don't have the money are spending thousands of dollars to be in the space with celebrities who didn't pay a dime. They're paying thousands of dollars to go to a party where people who are in the clique, in the know, those who have, don't have to pay. But you want to pay to be by them. And I've seen that in the house of God, that you guys will pay so much to go see a gospel celebrity sing, or you'll pay so much to go see a, a celebrity preacher per, uh, teach, but you won't go into any house of God where the preacher who does it for nothing is saying the same thing. You're paying and spending money to have access to say, I was here. That's what I see. That's what I see. You, you don't value. Do you really value God? Because if you value God, you would value who he made you to be. In other words, when you're in the presence of people who might have a bigger platform, uh, don't worship their platform. They are blessed just to know who you are. They are blessed to be in the same room with you. You got to get to a place to value who God has made you to be. Man, when you know who you are, <laughs> all of the flaws all of the roles, all of that stuff, you just come out and expose yourself because, listen, when you have surrendered to God, you're fully exposed. You're free. God wants you to be free. If you want to be free, you must stay in relationship. That's all I came by here to tell you today, brothers and sisters. That's all I came to tell you is that if you are in relationship, you are a doer of the word, you 
was sore. No, I'm not trying to do Morris Day and the bird. Oh, ee, oh, ee, oh. I, I've been, oh, let me stop. Yes, that was before saved. <laughs> I got three points for you to take. Three points. You ready for this? I know some of y'all are like, yeah, I'm going to take these today. Yes, yes. Point one. God loves us so much that he will allow us to have what we love. Yes, you can be anything you want to be. And you can identify with that. He'll give you over to it. So he loves you so much he'll give you what you love. It's your choice. Point two. Make sure what we love does not hate God. Make sure what we love does not hate God. Love him first, brothers and sisters. Love him first above any and everything. He'll give you the desires of your heart because when you love him first, the desires of your heart will line up with this will. He'll give you that more and more. And point three, God's love protects those who want him above everything. God's love protects those who want him above everything. Brothers and sisters, just love him. Choose him. Do the word and you will overcome the world because the Savior has already overcome the world. Amen? Brothers and sisters, for those of you right now, if you find that you are truly not in relationship with the Savior, maybe you are a backslider. Maybe you're not saved at this moment and you realize that if that day came and you died, you don't know where you would spend your eternity. That's an uncomfortable position to be in. And quite frankly, if you're in that position, your soul is not at rest. You're anxious, you're wandering, you, you can't seem to get a grip on things. That's because your soul is not resting in the right place. If you want your soul to be at rest, your conscience to be at rest, this is the moment for you to give your life to the Savior. You ready to do that? You ready? Repeat after me. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. For the backslider, I want you to say, I am a backslider. I want you in my life for the backslider. For the sinner, forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are the son of God, that you died on the cross for my sins and you were raised from the dead three days later with all power and you sit at the right hand of the father. I invite you into my heart to change me from the inside out. You have permission, Lord, to transform me. It's in your holy name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you believe it in your heart, then you're on the right path. Make sure you get baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And then find, for those of you online, a good Bible-based local ministry that you can get connected to. It's good to be virtual, part of BGI, and I, I want to keep you there as well, but there's nothing like having someone who can hug you when you need a hug. That local community of believers can help you navigate help you in your time of need, give you food, give you shelter, get connected. And those of you online, make sure you download our mobile app if you're not watching us through our mobile app at bygodinspired.org and share it with others. Amen? Well, brothers and sisters, this is an opportunity to give. And you know what the word says about giving. I give you the scripture every week, 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 and 7, what the Apostle Paul says. Also, we talk about Malachi and how uh, we learn from watching what those who had responsibility over the temple, what they did. They robbed God. They took the best stuff, the best offering, for, and kept it for themselves. 
and gave God the leftovers. And he says, you rob God. There's destruction coming. So here we are now where we are the temple and we are supposed to be stewards of the temple. And God says to us, what spirit dwells in you? So now when God provides provision for the individual temple, which is you, which is me, will you do as the, the priest of the temple in the old they did? Will you keep the best for yourself and give me your leftovers? You rob God. That's New Testament revelation on this situation. So make sure you give Cash App, dollar sign, BGI Fellowship, Cash App, dollar sign, BGI Fellowship. You can also text to give at 901-244-4688, 901-244-4688. If you really want to see a tremendous blessing, give more than you've ever given before. This is good ground. And I'm doing this because the Lord is instructing me to do this. Believe what God is going to do in your life. And I believe that God will bless you in ways that you have not been blessed before. You can also give online at bygodinspired.org. And for those of you watching, you see the address where you can mail your contributions to. But God is so good. He's so good and he is so faithful that I can't help but just serve him. And I hope and pray that you find ways to bless those in the community. Don't allow your good to be spoken evil of. And watch what God continues to do in your life. Amen? Amen. So, brothers and sisters, there are some, some announcements I want to make as we get ready to get out of here. One, uh, just want to remind you about our Sabbath Saturday worship. Someone asked me the other day, yesterday, actually, I was at an event, and um, I had just left here to go to an event that, that I had to go to because it's part of my job, my day job. And uh, when I told him we had service today, uh, uh, yesterday on the Sabbath day, he says, oh, you're Seventh-day Adventist. I said, no, I, I'm not going to let you put a label on me. I just believe what God says. I just believe what God says. Keep the Sabbath day holy. And so if we are going to go by what the world says, this world, that, that there's seven days in the week, and, and obviously you can go back in time, and the first day of the week is today, and the last day of the week is Saturday, and then you go into the text, and God says uh, to rest on the last day, the seventh day, and keep it holy, um, and he still requires that because he did not raise his son from the dead on the Sabbath day. He waited till Sunday. He told the prophets before that time he would get up on the third day. God could have made sure his son was raised from the dead the day after he went in the tomb, but he, Sabbath day is important to him. So keep it holy. The question to each one of us is, what does holy look like? You know, <laughs> we're just doing what he says. Feast, rest, bring glory to God, do some act of service that brings glory to God, disconnect to, from all of the stuff that's trying to... Um, Compete for your attention and just focus on God through prayer and meditation. 24 hours, sunset on Friday to sunset on Saturday. Do that. You might want to get out in your garden and, and water the garden so that you can have food to give to people. That brings glory to God. There's a neighbor next door, an elderly citizen who, who can't do some things at her house. Help that person. That brings glory to God. In other words, it's not about you. It's about somebody else. That's all it is. That's how we keep it holy. And when you do it, you are actually sharing the gospel because you're doing what the word says. You're in relationship. And then when you understand what you get from keeping a Sabbath mindset, it will carry over into the first day of the week and the second day and the third day and the fourth day. You will be a Sabbath person. It's not a denomination. It's a way of living. Keep it holy. Amen? So we have Saturday service at 11 a.m. I would love to see some of you guys. I'd love to see some of y'all show up at both of them because I want to see you all. Because you don't, don't think that you're going to get the same thing you got on Saturday and Sunday. It's always different. Then we have Ignite Sunday. Ignite Sunday today because what I love about Ignite Sunday, it's important for you to understand this, and we're going, is that the Savior was raised from the dead on Sunday, ignited into purpose. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with us coming together and worshiping on Ignite Sunday. 
ignited into purpose to deal with the craziness we're going to deal with on Monday. Then we have Wednesday Bible study, 6.30. Want to see you there? Let's come and grow. This is the year of faith at BGI. Let us all stand. I, I, I want you to be encouraged today. Honey, bring me that mic, and I'm going to ask Elder Jackie to come and pray us out do the benediction here at BGI. We have a lot of people here who have been engaged and involved in so many different ways. Make sure she has the mic. I want to thank each one of you for being consistent and committed. Come on up here, Elder Jackie, to God's word. And I want you to be reminded of the importance of being a doer. Close us out, Elder Jackie. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for this opportunity for us to come together in fellowship and receive from you on today, God. God, we glorify you. You are our strength. You are our keeper. You are our friend. God, you are our everything. Help us to depend on you for everything. Thank you for what we have received, what we have heard on today, God. God, I'm asking that you bless everyone that's listening the sound of my voice right now. Meet them where they are. Meet their needs, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for just the opportunity, God. We thank you that in you there is safety, Father, that you cover us and you keep us and you yes. provide for us, God. In you we have everything that we need. So God, help us to connect to you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Help us not to go into stress and anxiety and all sorts of things but God help us to connect to you every day God we thank you for safe travels back to our homes and our various destinations until we come together again it is in Jesus name that we pray with thanksgiving amen and amen go in peace brothers and sisters to God be the glory Just make it the cry of your heart.